In this tutorial, I'm going to review some of the new data components that are included within Semantic version 3. The objective of these components is to help users create portable data sets that can be used externally of Grasshopper, um, but there are also a few tools included here that could benefit other workflows. So what you see on screen here is a very basic grasshopper definition that's generating a series of boxes of multiple sizes um, with different colors. And you can see that at the end of this definition, there are a series of outputs here. And what I want to do is I want to use these outputs to drive the creation of a data set um, that will capture the values of these outputs and I can use them externally in places like Power BI. So under the Proving Ground tab, you'll see that there is a data collection of components, and these are included in Semantic version 3. And there are two components I want to start looking at first. Uh, the first one here is the Create Data Table component. So when you define a data table, this is essentially helping you organize a structured set of tabular data. And then data tables can then be created and consumed within a data set. So a data set component is provided that will allow you to provide multiple tables uh, for this data set. So the first thing we need to do is we need to define a name of a data table. So I'm going to find the panel component and we're going to give this a name and this data set is just going to simply be named boxes. And after that string is defined. We're just going to connect that into the name input. The second set of inputs relates to the headers. So we can kind of envision that within this data set we have a series of outputs and these outputs are going to refer to different columns of data, right? So we have uh, a component here that's generating a list of IDs, um, essentially box 0 through 175. We have a listing of center points, um, areas, and volumes. And so what I want to do here is basically define a list of what those headers are going to be called in our table. So we're going to have an ID column. We're going to have a center column. We're also going to have an area column and a volume column. So basically collecting data uh, about our boxes here. And the other thing I need to do is for this panel component is make sure that multi-line data is unchecked so we can use each of those um, uh, items there as proper headers. They kind of factor and fold into their own list. So I'm going to connect those into the headers input. And now what I need to do is define a set of values and those values are going to be driven by these outputs here. So what we can use is what's called the entwine component to connect and stream these data points into a single uh, tree. So I'm going to start with the IDs, box 1 through 0 through 175, um, as well as we then need to provide in the list of center points, and then we're going to provide the list of areas, and then I'm going to zoom in and create one more input here for volume. So we now have an ordered list of data. Um, each of the tree uh, branches here in this case is, contains 176 items, and each of those items corresponds with the columns that we're defining here as headers, so ID, center, area, and volume. So we can now connect this entwine component into values, and this is now going to define a data table named boxes. So all of this data about these objects are now kind of being collapsed into that data table. And so um, this data set can then receive a data table. And what's nice about this data set is that depending on your grasshopper definition, it may require one or many data tables to represent the data that you need. In this case, I'm only defining one data table, so that will just simply go into the table's input. And the name of the data set can be whatever you want as well. So I'm going to copy and paste one of these panels here, and I'm just going to call this grasshopper boxes as the data set name. So we now have a data set defined, and this data set can now be used in a number of different contexts. And one of the tools that we've provided for 
workflow purposes is a component for exporting a data set to a SQLite database. Because we're providing multiple tables, um, it becomes really easy then for us to define a component here for um, exporting a data set to a proper database format for SQLite. And the nice thing about SQLite is that it's a public domain database file format, doesn't require a server or a client or anything like that. And it can be used uh, in a variety of different ways, such as connecting to Power BI and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and connect my data set here to the data input of the SQLite database. Now, there are a couple of other things that we can do to expand our table. Um, and this also introduces us to a few new tools that are included under this data uh, tab in the Proving Ground folder for Semantic V3 as well. You'll notice that we have a number of components here for serializing geometry as GLTF uh, binary, uh, which can really help us take geometry from a grasshopper definition and stream it externally. Uh, GLTF is, has become a very popular format for writing geometry to places for use on the web and in reports and dashboards. We also have a color to hexadecimal um, component here, which will take color values and turn them into hexadecimal text strings, which can also be quite convenient uh, in external analytical environments as well. So let's look at extending our data table. So right now we have four fields in our data table. We're going to add two more in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert the colors that I'm displaying here to hexadecimal. So I'm going to grab that hexadecimal component and I can simply take this listing of colors here um, from the gradient tool and supply it into the color input. And what this is going to do is it's going to provide us with hexadecimal output. And I'm going to also go ahead and flatten this input here so we can see the, the full list. We, you know, we're kind of at this stage dealing with flattened data. So there's our list of colors provided in hexadecimal. And I'm going to go ahead and pull that component over here closer to my entwine component. And I'm going to go ahead and add a, um, an input here and I'm gonna stream my hexadecimal values in like so. And what I need to do is also go up here and provide a new header field for a color. And so now we have a data table that is representing color as well using this component. Now, one of the other more novel components that we're providing here is this ability to take geometry from Grasshopper and serialize it as a GLTF uh, binary string. So it can be used externally. So you can see that we're providing two components here, one for reading mesh geometry in the GLTF format and bring it into Grasshopper, but we can also write an object to a GLTF binary string. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that component out and I can simply take the output of this um, box geometry that is being scaled in 3D here and connect it into the mesh input for that uh, component. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna generate a set of GLTF binary or as it's referred to here as GLB strings. So now our geometry is being captured for use uh, externally as well. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten these meshes here. So that's one single list. I'm going to go through the same step of adding a uh, adding an input there to our entwine component. I'm going to pass that in. And then I'm going to go ahead and double click into our headers here and add one more header. I'm going to call it mesh. So we now have a data table that's defining information about our grasshopper definition, as well as color and mesh information that's being streamed out to this data table and then consumed in the data set. And then finally, what we want to do is write this information to SQLite. And the SQLite file will then be useful um, in another context like Power BI uh, for visualization and analysis. So what I'm going to do here is I need to define a file path. 
I'm going to go to the params tab, we go to the primitive, and we can find that we have a file path component. You can also you know, double click and search uh, file path if you want. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and just define a new file location. And I'm going to call this grasshopper boxes 2db save and put that into the path and then what I'm going to do here is find a toggle which will control the write function of this component so by switching this toggle to true we're now authoring the SQLite database file and so once that file is created we can open up and inspect that database file. This is a free SQLite database uh, editor. Um, and this one is connected to the Grasshopper Boxes database. And what you'll see is that we have a single table named Boxes sitting in the database. We can perform SQL queries on this database if we wanted to, but you know it's just as easy to also inspect things through this interface here. You can see that we have our fields that have been created and defined in Grasshopper. If I go to Browse Table, this is the data set that's been created, inclusive of ID, center point, area volume, the color, and then finally the GLTF mesh. So we've now created the output of our Grasshopper definition as this portable database. And where this has benefit is that places like Power BI can now connect to this database and read information from it and it can be used for display and analysis. So here's an example of a Power BI database, um, Power BI report that is connected to the database and it's displaying the boxes because we're consuming the geometry um, and reporting the geometry out of Grasshopper and we're using our uh, 3D visual that's included in Semantic version 3 to read that information. And we're also showing the information in a tabular format and a couple of cards that are summarizing the data. So with this data manipulation to, uh, tools um, that are included in Semantic v3, we can start with a grasshopper definition. We can organize our grasshopper definition output and we can then start to define these data structures that can be portable and used externally for all sorts of analysis and interactive reporting.